Hi all, this is a quick video with regards to the questions that you should make at the end of an interview. So you are going for a PhD, at the beginning you've asked about 10 questions or 15 questions. We had another, last week's video was about the questions that you're asked and what you should say. At the end of that interview you should also make a few questions. They will give you the time to make a few questions you better be engaged and you have already prepared something. In this video, we will go about these questions and how important they are to make a few. First things first, just make sure that you have written down those questions because you will not have a lot of time. And during that interview, which is already half an hour, 45 minutes, you may have already got the answers in a few of those questions. You better have a handful of questions in front of you so that you can have at least a couple of questions to make. Now, number one question, and I think that's my favorite, is the supervision style, supervision management. How often do I meet the students? So a lot of students are asking that to me, and I think that's a brilliant question to get an idea of how often you will be meeting your supervisor, whether you will be meeting alone, a face-to-face -face meeting, or you will do more remote meetings, or you will be like in groups. So just to get a feeling of the supervisory team, that's a brilliant question to ask that will also show that you want that engagement and you are expecting from the supervisor to do the same you may also ask whether there are any lab meets and you will be meeting all together the PhD students you will be doing presentations and sharing ideas all together so try to get as much as information about the supervisory style what is required from the university but also what extra the supervisor will be doing for you Along with that, you can ask about the size of the group or the part of the group that is dealing with a similar project with yours. In other words, if you will have a few PhD students, colleagues that you will be sharing ideas, if not even working together. As we discussed in the previous video, there is no right and wrong with the supervisory style or with the size of the group, uh, because there are cases that a smaller size means more direct communication with the supervisor, where a biggest group means that you are one of the many. However, there is the opposite effect as well. There are cases where if the group is bigger, then you get more exposure, you get more um, discussions going on, you get more help if you need to for a software or a coding or an experimental setup. So there is not right and wrong. It's just for you important to get an idea of where you're going if you're accepted. Another very good question is how many papers? As we discussed in other videos, there are universities that have specific policies and they say by the time you submit your thesis, you should have published one or two papers or maybe one paper is published, another one is under review or maybe they require more papers. That is very much discipline specific as well. But what you would like to know from your potential supervisor is how many papers she or he has in mind for this particular project. That is good to know so that you can plan early, but it also shows that you are engaged, you're motivated, you want to do more research, you want to publish, and this is something that is in your priorities. So by opening a discussion on the topic, you will get more information, very useful for you, but also you will demonstrate where you're coming from. Of course, it's not only about numbers, so more doesn't mean better. On that, you can also ask, where are you planning to publish? Are we publishing in these journals or the other journals? If you have an idea about the area and the best journals around, you may even say that I would like to publish in this and that. If you have already published several papers before you actually start your PhD, that's even better and you can have a more fruitful discussion on that. Now, another question that you can make is about the available funding. No matter if your PhD is sponsored or not, you can ask whether there is any other funding that you can get, either from the university or externally, whether there are organizations that they can fund your project like the, from the industry. And in general, just to have a feeling of whether you can do extra things. Again, that's very good for a starting discussion with your potential supervisor. In general, available funding and resources are extremely useful, especially if you're thinking of going and attending conferences and seminars. And this is something that you can discuss with your potential supervisors, whether there are planned 
um, uh, conferences and seminars that you might attend, whether the university is supporting, usually universities, they have a support fund that they send. How many of these you're expected to go in which countries if they have already been planned? Most likely we know in advance what conference we will send our PhD students because the conference are organized a couple of years before. So if you are starting your PhD in the next few months, most likely some of the conference in the next couple of years will be already organized. So it's good to know that you might be attending in those conferences. Last but not least is what kind of courses you might be taking. So as we discussed again in another video, there are universities that they require you to attend a course at the beginning of the PhD maybe a few modules. If that is not the case, then most likely you will have to attend a series of training courses from 5 to 15, 20 different courses. So again, it will be very good to have an idea of what kind of courses you will be attending and if there are any specific seminars for this project. So for instance, I would send my PhD student to learn a programming language or learning um, how to design experiments or learn something more about statistical analysis. So again, that is extremely useful to know and you collect all that information that you got from the interview, from their questions, the discussion and your questions in order to make your final decision, especially if you have more than one offers. So hopefully that concludes nicely the whole interview session. So if you have any questions, please write them down below in the comment section. If you feel that you got some useful information and you want to pass that over to other students and potential PhD candidates, please feel free to share this video and perhaps considering subscribing. So with that said, see you in the next video.